In this video, I am going to teach technical reports writing and technical proposal writing almost both are same, but see here. First thing what we have to follow, what and all we have to keep in mind, what should not do, what to do, we are going to see. Right. First, know your audience, either report or proposal, first thing you have to know your audience. Knowing your audience is critical to writing a good technical document or any written material for that matter anything you are creating keep that in mind to which audience to whom who is your readers right who are your readers that you have to keep in mind before start creating a write up or a oration or anything if people think you do not understand who they are and what they are interested in then they simply won't read your work obviously then that, 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 that is a waste of work so first before creating anything any art not only writing any art before creating keep your readers in mind right keep your spectators audience in mind and then move forward knowing who is reading and evaluating your proposal is extremely important right so while uh, you are starting you are creating a proposal that should be read by somebody that should be evaluated corrected by somebody right so that evaluator should be in the mind of the creator as with papers know your audience technical readers not necessarily in your field of expertise financial and legal advisors government officials all these people are evaluating your paper either you are writing to them or not these people will evaluate your paper at any cost so that should agree with all their points of view so your audience sees thousands of proposals so many proposals your audience have read your audience have seen your readers have seen so your proposal should vary from them already read one they quickly know what is genuine what is unique and what is not in your paper they want you to cut to the chase rather than create elaborate explanations you need not to give what they said what he said what was in that paper the paper what you said that should be there precisely so that uniqueness should be there then that particular uniqueness should be highlighted instead of circumlocuting instead of elaborating unnecessarily they want you to answer their questions very specifically the questions you raised there should be answered in your paper particularly without any confusions proposal writing is a very stressful process obviously tight deadline should be there a great many rules and requirements should be there you are emotionally invested in the results the stress is increase with the number of collaborations in front, right while you are start writing a proposal obviously so many questions should be there to answer right and then only you can come up with a proper uh, proposal deadline should be there obviously to what personalities you have to write the weightage of the personality you have seen and you have to committed emotionally with them so obviously it is a stressful process but once you know the pulse of it obviously you can win right we'll see writing suggestions while writing a proposal what do you have to do really know your audience first thing already i told you know the style guide and what style basis you have to write there are so many style guides like apa mla i triple e so, so those are the style guides or guide these guides tells you uh, to uh, how to write and what spacing and uh, like uh, uh, literature review all these things what and all you have to do these guides will tell regarding only the style of your writing not the idea of your writing that we have to create so on what style basis with the font the color the line spacing right uh, from where we have to take all uh, this chronology non chronology everything the style guide will say so you have to strictly follow the same guidelines same style guide from the beginning till the end write your heart out what you think write it out right you need not to keep something inside and you need not to write something which will never agrees with your own self right write your heart out check the details complaints to requ requested information in text citation and references conformance to style grammar and punctuation equations figures and tables all these details should be checked properly all these details are evidently proven one was given or not you should not give your own interview you can give your own interpretation but that should not be argumentative in proposals right so compliance to requested information so what was the inf information requested that should be present there 
in text citations and references should be there because where you have taken such some ideas a, a new idea cannot be born suddenly it can be discussed by somebody but how it differ from them that matters right so you have to cite somebody and that citation should be there in the reference section at the last that is very much important right conformance of the style that style conformance should be there grammar and punctuation should be proper equations figures and tables all these things should be there in a proposal and should be in a right manner without any mistakes or faults then and last create a recognizable look and your thesis your proposal should create a recognizable look recognizable look in the sense some strong authoritative look should be there we have done this for some college of engineering something you have right you have written it is a recognizable logo in the a footer you should use any uh, logo in the footer also to make your uh, uh, proposal an authoritative look and you have to know when to stop it also when to use where not to use when not to use everything you have to keep in mind then we'll go for style grammar and punctuation basis what are the errors we are making and what we have to concentrate on it in the proposals and what are there should be there in the proposal First, acronyms you can use acronyms in the proposal you must write out an acronym the first time you use it in the body of the paper you can use the entire thing in the first time in the next rest of the times while you're using the same context same phrase in the sense you can use the same acronym but that acronym should be mentioned in the acronym section write the term first and then put the acronym in parenthesis also write out the acronym in the abstract also however you must write it out again when first used in the body of the paper if you have great many acronyms and you use them frequently throughout the paper it is a courtesy to your readers to provide your glossary list at the end of the paper if you are using acronyms yeah you use use that if you are using two or three times use that and make the perfect sense in the parenthesis right okay if you are using it many times and so many acronyms in the sense make a separate list at the last APA style of numbers so this is one of the style guide I told you right so this while you are using this APA style of numbers what things you have to use words from 1 to 9 should be used in words only right and numerals for 10 and above if you are using numbers from 1 to 9 use a T E N N I N E like that with with spellings with uh, words and about 10 if it is going you can use the numerals itself you need not to use the numbers you should not use the numbers use numerals for as well as you can use these numerals for units of time you can use numerals dates ages you should not use any dates like 24th uh, 24th th november and ov EMBR. you should not use like that right you should use numbers only ages numbers of parts of series si units all these things should have numerals only words should not come except this one to nine numerals where you are using you can use words after that you should only use the numerals instead of words ieee style of math so while using mathematics symbols while using calculations you have to use follow the style variables are set in italic obviously whenever you are using variables use the variables in italic vectors and matrices are usually bold face italic in italic but it in the bold face this vectors and matrices remove commas around variables in texas where and all you are using these variables don't use commas always add a zero before a decimal but do not add after right a decimal if if you are you are using a number with decimal before it should oh, uh, zero should come after that you should not use any zeros spell out units in text without quantities where the noise is gi uh, given in decibels obviously it should be spell out you should not use in the numerals how much quantity the entire quantity should be used there you should not constrain it you should not abbreviate it you should have used the entire quantity the entire quantity should be spelled out numbers and units used as compounds adjectives should be hyphenated only if needed for clarity obviously so whenever you are using this uh, uh, numbers and units and the compound adjectives like uh, like kb or uh, uh, this inches this uh, mm's and the all you have to use this hyphens right just for the clarity purpose use thin spaces instead of comma between numbers and tens or hundreds of thousands see 
P usually we are using 60 comma 30 we are using for 60,000 instead of using that comma you can make like this while continuous numbers you are using you can you can avoid that comma because we are using that comma after the number right after the uh, the particular number like 60,000, 100,000 and 4,000 so between these we have to use commas. So, uh, at the same time if you are using the comma after 60,000 also it will be confused so avoid using it and use a thin space use 0 first nth like that the nth 0 first second 99th this th 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 you can use that for instead of first second or d third you can use like that use the word equation at the start of the sentence only but in text just use the number unless describing the equation so while you are describing an equation use just a number first time if you are so for example see Darlington equation this is your quoting for the first time you can use this Darlington equation but use that one uh, next to it if suppose you are using this Nell equation in the second use this two whenever you are using this Darlington and the Nell equation in further th in the next next pages in the further pages you can you need not to use the, again the Darlington equation the Nell equation uh, the Pythagoras equation instead of that you can use this one two three which was mentioned in the first usage itself the slash is used in place of the word per when it leads to the clarity of the sentence the ratio of 16 samples to 35 samples as compared to the samples per s per s actually per sample is 16 samples per sample so whenever you are using this per use slash instead of using this per use indices instead of indexes when referring to subscripts so you have to use this word indices not indexes plural variables should come with an es so whenever you are using this plural variables whenever you are using this variables go for italic whenever you are using this plural variable use s so these are the things you have to use while you are following this ieee math go through it you have to memorize these things while you are uh, uh, going to present a paper or going to start creating a proposal these things are like a mantra for paper writers right for presenters colons and semicolons this is a very common issue with the engineering documents obviously because most papers and proposals include difficult concept and equations it is very important to use commas and semicolons correctly in order to help the reader avoid the overuse of parentheses again this will cause brain freeze you will they will confuse where the parentheses are start where the normal statement has start so don't use parentheses instead you can explain it in the normal way after you have written your paper read it as if you were the audience and try to break up the longer more difficult sentences and paragraphs there should not be a longer statement why because while the reader reads in the sense that may they will they will move out of the way they will go out of that idea what you are going to convey so don't ever miss that don't ever frame long sentences long paragraphs break that into two that will help the readers to get to your points hyphens if a noun is the object of the sentence then the modifier before it is not hyphenated it should not be hyphenated see the diameter of the glass tube was 10 mm if it is coming this 10 mm okay you can but after the 10 mm something you are using the noun you are using in the sense obviously the 10 and mm between you have to use a hyphen if the noun is a part of the modifying phrase then hyphenate the glass tube had a 10 mm diameter so the diameter is the here the adjective which tells about this 10 mm right so at the time you have to use this hyphen that is an eg so instead of using this ie and eg for example and that is these are the latin phrases engineering writing is very complex and hard to follow in latin ie means that is and igeg means for example instead of using these things you can use that is and e for example itself in uh, in the papers it will be easier on the reader if you simply use the english words instead of the latin acronyms that and which that we have to use where we are using essential information where we are producing essential sentences but which we are giving some extra that time you have to use the switch but whenever you are using the switch you have to put comma see that is used with the restrictive phrases phrases that are essential to the sentence which is used with non restrictive phrases phrases that are not essential to the sentence so when you use which a comma should proceed with it so you have to use a comma with which but not with that 
different and various when you are going to say only to mention two things you can use this different let's see different is the best used in the context of two dissimilar uh, items but several various dissimilar items you have to use this various with more than one several types of items more than two more than three at the times you can use this various but you should not do use this, this different and various cannot be used only to uh, mention two different items when you while you're using these two different items use different when you are using more than two different items in the sense several items in the sense go for various so please try to avoid long long sentences so avoid long long sentences rule of thumb read it aloud and if you do if you if you are capable to take breathe when you can read it in a one breath so that is okay and you need some break there some breathe you are taking in the middle of the sentence in the sense break the sentence try to break up long sentences your reader will thank you long long paragraphs one paragraph for one thought idea i already told you in organizing principles of paragraph one paragraph should contain only one thought if your paragraphs are too long a key idea might be missed obviously they will lose the idea right they will go out of the path you cannot control the readers so make precise paragraphs also your readers give up trying it too so these are the things you have to keep in mind and finally technical writing for papers reports and proposals have little changes actually are much taken actual research different writing styles can be followed in papers reports and proposals keep your readers in mind every time comply with the journal style guidelines so the readers idea and style guidelines all these three are very much important in creating a proposal as well as the report both are almost same right so go through it and you have to memorize certain things here that will help you to any time at any time while you are creating a paper or presenting in a seminar or a conference or anything so whenever you are creating a new work so these styles should be followed these things should be followed to present things so keep that in mind go through it if you have any doubt kindly let me know we'll clarify thank you